What's up, guys? Uh, today, we're setting up Dolphin for Emulation Station. And Dolphin is pretty amazing because it actually gives us two different systems. It'll give us the Wii and the GameCube simultaneously, which is really cool. Um, adding both of these systems into Emulation Station really ups the uh, playability of like the most recent stuff you can kind of add into it. Um, Wii being extremely close in terms of time relevance, you know, of different types of emulators that you can get and stuff like that to add into Emulation Station, you know, as opposed to, you know, like Atari and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to need three things. One with any of these, uh, you know, how-to videos is going to be the Emulation Station and it should be already installed. Uh, if it's not, click the link above right there and you will then be able to see kind of what my take is on the best and the most simplest basic way to install Emulation Station. Um, the second thing that you're going to need is uh, Dolphin, uh, which you can go to their site. I'll have the link down below. And uh, make sure you get the 5.0. Um, there is huge, huge improvements in just everything globally with this emulator uh, between the 4 revision, the 4. whatever revisions, and the newest revision, which is 5.0 or 5. you know, whatever as uh, you're doing this. So make sure you have that. Um, download that ahead of time if you want to. And then, of course, you need the games. You need um, the ROMs or whatever. So we'll be setting up both of the systems. So for our testing here, I have a Wii game, which is Mario Kart, and a GameCube game, which is F-Zero. Uh, so cool, yeah. Um, what we're going to want to do first is we're going to want to go ahead and install Dolphin. And we're going to go ahead and install Dolphin in kind of a unique way. Just nothing super special, but we're going to pick a different uh, path to put it under other than the um, default path. So we want both of these checkmarked, uh, DirectX and Visual C++. A lot of things use this. If you don't have Visual C++ by now, you're going to have to get it and it'll download and install for you. So we're going to click next. And instead of doing it in the program files, we're going to browse to our um, emulation station folder. So uh, if you've done it like me, this should be in the same spot as it always has been. Um, and so if you see me drilling down here, I've gone to uh, C users and then my name, which I can name my computer droid. Let's test one. Uh, emulation station, and then I'm going to go to systems. Uh, this makes it really simple so that way all your systems are residing in the same folder for emulation station. Simpler is always better. Uh, we're going to click OK. We're going to click install. All right, now that's done, we'll click finish and we'll see here that we do have an icon on our desktop. Um, this of course is just how the uh, emulator is intended to be ran by simply running it on its own. It's really cool, really helpful. And as you can see, I've ran it before and these are all the games that I actually have. So it found the folder and all that kind of stuff. I have uh, previous setups and everything. So yours probably won't do that. It'll probably just be blank, but that's okay. Um, that's just to kind of show you that it will run on its own if you ever want to test a ROM, uh, game, whatever, or just want to use it by itself. Don't have to have emulation station. So now that that's done, what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and open up emulation station folder. Uh, so we'll go to that same directory again. C users droid or your name emulation station. And um, I'll delete this out just so that way it's as clean as possible here. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and put our games in here. These, this next couple of steps can be done in any order. doesn't matter. Um, just picking this as the way that I want to do it. So um, I like to keep my naming conventions for my folders all in lowercase. I don't know why. So... We've gone to Emulation Station, we're in our ROMs directory or folder, and I'm just going to copy these 
and put them into here. And of course, uh, Wii games and GameCube games are significantly larger than the <laughs> small ROMs that we're used to with Nintendo and Sega Genesis and Atari and all those other ones. Uh, Super Nintendo, those are usually less than a megabyte, sometimes just a couple of megs or whatever. Uh, we're now getting into the gigs category here, but Dolphin runs them fantastically. So um, drag that back over to the screen there so we keep it neat and tidy. And as soon as this is done, what we'll do is we will go ahead and set up our systems config. So that's done. We have both games in here, uh, both systems, both games. F-Zero for this one and Mario Kart for this one. Uh, and just kind of showing you going here step by step. It's in my ROMs folder once more, you know, so um, Now that we have this Completed we're going to go ahead and edit our systems config uh, Once again, I always recommend using uh, notepad plus plus for this um, It's really great. It's way better than ever trying a notepad or wordpad or whatever. So and um, <laughs> just for the sake of the video, I try to make the text a little bit bigger for you guys to see. Um, some really helpful people in other comments have made a suggestion that, you know, things are a little bit harder to see. So uh, I'm dealing with a, a 1080p, you know, screen here. So it looks big to me. But when you're maybe looking on your cell phone or even just a smaller screen, maybe that doesn't look as good. So I try to make the text a little bit bigger here. Um, I've already filled this out. I'll put this in the comments down below too, so that we can just copy and paste it. However, um, you want to make sure, uh, as always, that all the paths match. Um, it can't just be, you know, a blind copy and paste and then close your eyes and click the button to make it work. You know, uh, you just got to know where things are and what it should be calling for. So um, the first system we set up here is going to be the Wii. And as you can see, the name Wii. Uh, name is Wii, file name is going to be Nintendo Wii, our path, it should match this, so we have ROMs, and then GC, or, or Wii, so we have ROMs, Wii, here, that matches, and then um, the extension, I've just seen this done so many different ways that I don't even want to bother trying to figure out which one works best, I put the ISO, which is normally the only way the game runs, uh, like with the Wii, is an ISO, um, whether it's capitalized or lowercase, I don't know if it's case sensitive. I just keep this the same. Um, this will help you weed out any strange issues where you can't figure out what's going on. So it's not a must, but I just do it that way. Um, next thing is our path for our system. And here's where we get into something a little interesting here. And as we look here, we've drilled down, and so we have systems, dolphin, and then dolphin. So the EXE is correct. You know, we have it capitalized and everything just in case, although I don't think it's case sensitive. Um, systems is spelled correctly, or it is systems instead of system. Made that uh, mistake in another video. And um, if you'll notice, we have a dash E behind, or in the, on the very end of it here, after the executable. Um, that is very, very important for Dolphin. And the reason why is because without that, it's not going to open the game. It's just going to open Dolphin and then stop right there. And Dolphin is super awesome. Um, if you were to drag and drop the game just onto the Dolphin executable over here, it would actually tell you all the parameters that it lists that it would accept and everything. And it says minus E if you want to go ahead and just play the game. So make sure you have Dolphin.exe minus E. Don't forget this. Um, platform, we, theme, we. And we're going to do exactly the same thing for the GameCube. Uh, so if you notice, GC, Nintendo GameCube, our ROMs path should be reflecting um, the correct GameCube. Uh, we also have an ISO for this. There are other extensions that sometimes the GameCube uh, games do have. So these are just listed here. And once again, I've kind of just gone to the very end, making them case sensitive and not case sensitive or capital and not capital there. Um, the path is going to be identical. You're calling the same executable. So that's really cool. It's just uh, one less emulator you have to have for two, two different systems. So 
I've got R minus E here again, making sure everything's spelled correctly. And then of course, platform and theme. Uh, these little tags right here uh, are always calling to the emulation station stuff and all that. So um, we look like we're pretty good to go here. And I think at this point we can bring up uh, emulation station and it should populate, <laughs> it should, uh, these games that we have put in here our GameCube and Wii games. We should be presented with two games, one for each system. Uh, so I'm going to drag these off to the side over here, clean up our desktop a little bit, and make sure my controller is on. We know to control it, turn our controller on before Emulation Station is booted up. If you haven't figured that out by now, you will, because it's very obvious and painful to keep making that mistake. So we will boot this up, and we have two games. We have our Wii and GameCube. We click on Wii, we should have Mario Kart, and we should have F-Zero in the other one. Yeah, so, moment of truth, hit the A button, it boots up Dolphin, and our game is automatically running. So, it's up and working, fantastic. Now, Alt F4 here, close that out, close this out, and we're just gonna try our other game to make sure that works too. Hit A, boots it up, Starts up the game, automatically good to go. Super easy, Alt F4, <laughs> Alt F4 on that one. Super easy, super really very basic things to do. It works really well right out of the box. Um, and some of the games that you can get for this are fantastic. Um, trying to think if there's anything else really that should uh, be said about this other than you know, if you're running into problems, if you're running into issues, uh, just keep checking your settings and stuff like that. And when in doubt, don't be afraid to wipe everything clean and start fresh and brand new. Um, I've been trying to actually help out a couple of people online now simultaneously with uh, just them beating their heads against the wall trying to get these things to work. And it wasn't specifically like Wii or GameCube, but just RetroArch and never different ones, um, different emulators. They just... Every time they hit the button, it just crash on them. Wipe everything clean, start fresh. Remember that these are not <laughs> put together by companies that have, you know, um, a quality uh, assurance in their product. It's just uh, normal everyday people that were awesome enough to take uh, time out of their busy schedules to put these things together and then try to continue to update them whenever they can. So guys, uh, if you have questions or comments below, great. Let's add to the uh, emulation community there if we can. And um, happy emulating.